Lucifer plays a huge role in Christianity and in just in, in Western pop culture, this, this, and that, right? You know, the, the occult loves Lucifer, the Christians abhor Lucifer, but Lucifer never existed in the Bible. And the, the reason why we created that archetype was because we had misunderstood and mistranslated the Hebrew text. So the entire world learned about Lucifer through one verse in the Torah, which is Isaiah 14, 12. And that's the famous verse that goes, O Lucifer, how art thou fallen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, we, we translated the word Lucifer into the English as an uppercase noun, a name with a, with a big L. But we mm -hmm. got the English from the Latin. And the Latin is where the word Lucifer is first uh, shown to us because it's a Latin word comprised of two root words, lucis, light, and fede, uh, which means to bring or to hold. And that's where the occult got the idea of Lucifer being the light bearer or light bringer. Mm. But we got the Latin version from the Greek version. And in the Greek where we would see Lucifer, we would see the word phosphorus, which is equivalent to the Greek Latin, or sorry, which is equivalent to the Latin Lucifer, which means light or fire mm -hmm. or okay. bright. But we got all of those from the Hebrew, which, which is uh, Hillel ben Shahar. And Hillel ben Shahar means Hillel, son of Shahar. And the word Hillel means bright or shiny. And so that's where we got Lucifer, son of the morning, Hillel ben Shahar, because Shahar also means morning, right? Okay, yeah. But there's a reason why that is used in the Torah. Isaiah was a royal prophet and a royal scribe, and he was writing during the time of the Babylonian exile, when the Babylonians were descending upon the kingdom of Judah and taking them all into captivity. And so he was writing a prophecy about the downfall of the Babylonians, saying that they are like Hillel ben Shahar. Hillel ben Shahar was actually a Canaanite deity belonging to an old mythology before Judaism. And in that mythology, Hillel was a younger god who tried to rise to the throne, but failed. But it gets even deeper. Um, the word Hillel, the Greek word phosphorus, the, the Latin word Lucifer are all words that could be used to describe or denote Venus. Mm. And Venus is the brightest celestial object in the sky preceding the sun. Right. And so uh, Hillel uh, was another version of an ancient um, Canaanite deity known as Athtar. And Athtar was a male rendition of the uh, female um, Astarte who was also Ishtar, who was also Inanna. And all of these goddesses were also um, represented by the star or the, or the symbol of Venus. And so Isaiah was, was prophetically and poetically saying that the Babylonians are like Venus. They are like Hillel. They think they are something bright and shiny, but they will soon be overshadowed by God or the sun. The sun, yeah. So that's what he was really saying. So the early Christians... Um, kind of looked at this and we're, we're like, oh, wow, like he's talking about some person named Lucifer. But we totally just took that and ran with it and, and exaggerated it. And so there never was a Lucifer. And so we took that, ran with it. And, and primarily, um, Oregon. So there, we say there never was a Lucifer. Well, they mentioned Lucifer and it was, the L wasn't capitalized, meaning it wasn't a person. Yeah. So, so what, it was a symbol? Well, Lucifer is a Latin word. And it was a it was the translation of Hillel ben Shahar, so there never was a Lucifer character. And when I say there there never was a Lucifer character, what I mean is there was never this right hand angel that was the leader of some choir who rebelled against God and then was cast down right. to earth. That's okay. the whole Lucifer mythos. That was put together over hundreds of years by Christians, but it all started with the mistranslation of what Isaiah was saying. Oh, okay. So Elel Ben Shahar was the source of, of what we created. Yeah. And it's kind of like, okay, so what? But the reason that's important is because if you, if you break down what, what Isaiah was doing, then it kind of opens up a whole other discussion because what he was doing was he was referencing even older Canaanite mythologies and this is what this whole Anunnaki thing is based off of. The whole Anunnaki thing is based off of the fact that Judaism, which is basically the first Abrahamic religion, is all based off of the Anunnaki tales. And um, I, can give you, I can give you an even crazier example. For example, um, in Genesis 126, right, when man is being created, 
you can open up any English Bible to this day and go to Genesis 126, and it'll read, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And there is plurality there. If you were to ask any theologian or whatever and be like, you know, why is there a plurality there? Mm -hmm. They would give you some cute answer like it's God talking to himself or God talking to Jesus or whatever. But that's not the truth. The reason there's plurality there is because the word that was used in, in the Hebrew text, the original, was not God. The word that was used was Elohim. And Elohim is a plural word, meaning the powerful ones. So if you go back and read Genesis 126 with that in mind, now you're reading, the powerful ones said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So who are the powerful ones? Well, the powerful ones are the Anunnaki. And the, the reason that, that that is so and how we know that is because the people who wrote the Bible, they were from the Middle East. You know, they, they right. lived in that area. They lived closer in time to the ancient Babylonians, Sumerians. to ancient Sumeria and all that. So the Sumerians were their ancestors. They, they knew those tales by heart. You know, for example, the uh, Sumerian Enuma Elish was reenacted every year in Babylon at the Akitu New Year Festival. So these were their ancestors. They knew these tales. They implemented them into their new religion. What is the Enuma Elish? The Enuma Elish is the uh, Sumerian cosmological tale, the tale of how the universe was created. Okay. And there's a, I get into that in, in my book, The Anunnaki Theorem. Mm -hmm. And also real quick, if anybody's interested to learn more, I have free documentary versions of both my Lucifer book and The Anunnaki book on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. that you can check out. Um, but yeah, so what I'm saying is, is the Bible, the Torah, whoever wrote it, and we still aren't even clear on as to who wrote, really wrote it, whoever wrote it, was writing it with the Anunnaki stories in mind, and not just their stories in mind, but a lot of the other religions around them in mind. But we'll, what we need to understand is that, for example, um, these religions, man, they're, they're built off of fallacies. You know, in some cases, lies, but a lot of times they're just based off of human error. For example, this whole Lucifer thing, Lucifer never existed. You know, Isaiah was referencing an old Canaanite myth and he was using it poetically to talk about the downfall of the Babylonians. But it was the early Christian writers like Oregon Adamantius, um, specifically in, in the second century uh, AD or common era, who, who took this and ran with it and exaggerated it. And it's just been exaggerated ever since. You think it's like the, the game of telephone over like history? Yeah, man, it was definitely like telephone and it was mostly just human error like we just weren't under you know there's a bunch of uh it was a bunch of um what do they call uh hellenistic jews and greeks yeah looking at um but i wonder if it was error if it was an intentional error i don't think so like oregon adamantius he was one of the dudes who like first looked at this and like created this archetype of lucifer and he was a wild dude he was later deemed a heretic because of his writings he was really wild like the way he thought about things mm -hmm. Um, but it, this didn't go unnoticed. For example, Martin Luther, the, the famous, you know, reformist, he spoke about this and, and, uh, he, he spoke about how there was never a Lucifer. He was smart enough to read this with the historical context in mind, as I'm explaining, like Isaiah was, he was an ancient dude who was closer to his ancestors, the Sumerians, but the, the early Christians were just so fanatical and reading it from their mind state of the new Testament or whatever. But this didn't go without, this didn't go unnoticed. You know, Martin Luther, he picked up on it like, yo, there's, there's no Lucifer. This is an error. Like we're reading this wrong, you know, and even the occultists, the famous occultists like Eliphas Levy uh, or Helena Blavatsky, um, who, are, who are huge players in the occult, the modern occult, they knew this too. But still, even though they knew that, they still played on the Lucifer archetype in philosophy and blew it up, and mm. which just made things even worse. Because it is a beautiful philosophy, if you think about it, you know, Lucifer being this bright angel who fell, and all he's trying to do is give us knowledge and, and upgrade our consciousness, you know. That's the whole story. But we're just putting all these puzzle pieces together that never really, uh, never initially were meant to be put together. <laughs>